IAGON provides compliance in a box when it comes to data storage. With me is the CEO, Navjeet Dalawal, to explain exactly what you mean by that. So uh, give us a description. Tell us what the company is all about. Hi, Jane. Yeah, um, we were actually founded in 2017. So we're working towards uh, compliance and making sure that uh, data regulation uh, is followed and abided by throughout the, throughout the world. So what we're focusing on is decentralized storage, and we're able to, through our patent, we're able to geolocate the data in a, in a certain fashion so that we can be compliant in, in different regulations, different, uh, different territories. Uh, so that's the general premise of it. We're a storage protocol, uh, meaning that we are kind of like an Airbnb for storage. So we match the end user's needs with, uh, with the resource providers. Very interesting. Okay. And um, it's a decentralized platform. Correct. Which is a key part of, of the whole uh, business plan, right? So why is that so important? Well, it, it allows us to be more secure and private. So the reason why uh, we are swaying away from centralized solutions like uh, AWS, Google, is because they are centralized in the sense that uh, they are the files are located in a specific area at a specific time. And that allows for, um, uh, you know, ease of uh, data leaks. It's not because of how AWS and Google are implemented, but how it's implemented from the company side. So how humans implement it on their interface leads to errors, which leads to data leaks. Uh, and in how we're doing it, instead of uh, centralizing and having files in a specific location at a specific time, we are sharding the data, meaning we're slicing it and we're spreading it across to resource providers according to the user's needs. So we're able to learn the behavior of the resource providers in different variables, which includes performance, availability, trustability, location. And these uh, variables are important to the end user. So if they want to highly performant, highly available node, they can do so. If they want a cheaper solution, less available, they can also do so. And it allows us to geolocate because the location of the, uh, we know the location of the resource provider. For example, if the person wants to be HIPAA compliant or uh, compliant with different regulations around the world, like GDPR, uh, we're allowed to allocate the data in those specific regions that those data regulations comply with. Well, that's very interesting. So that is where the compliance in a box comes in, that you're able to kind of adapt to wherever the, the person or company or whatever is storing this data. Correct, correct. And that that um, saves a lot of costs for especially big enterprises and small, also, also small enterprises, because it's a kind of unknown world in compliance today. And a lot of enterprises are having trouble uh, being data compliant. And we're allowed, we can focus on that in an easy way. Mm. Are you using artificial intelligence at all? We're using machine learning, which is a derivative of art artificial intelligence. So the, the machine learning comes into play when we're learning the behavior of the resource providers. And what we can do is optimize the resource allocations for uh, the end users. So by all times, optimizing it and having it ready for end users needs. So if we get a new client, we're able to uh, locate and uh, give the best kind of resource providers that, that uh, end users are asking for. Uh, Najit, let's talk about the roadmap for the company. Um, what does uh, what's on your radar screen for the next couple of years? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, right now, actually, we have a, a test net going on, and we have over about uh, two hundred, over two hundred twenty actually resource providers already uh, um, allocating their storage uh, space. Next year, we have the decentralized compute aspect, which allows us to also go into the decentralized cloud services aspect, meaning that we can host websites uh, and web domains and things like that. Uh, it, it, it also caters to gaming and it can go a lot of different industries as storage and compute is definitely a sought after commodity. Mm -hmm. It's increasing and there's ever growing need of, uh, for data and compute uh, throughout the world. So this is a up, up and coming. We're going to be releasing our uh, protocol or product uh, in next month, actually. And that will allow us to onboard, uh, onboard end, end users as well. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and talk about just in general, the data industry, AI, blockchain, where do you see it going as an industry over the next 10 years? I, I, it's a definitely uh, an ever-growing industry. And, you know, there's a lot of interest in the, in the space for and everything is digitalized these days. 
So there's a high demand for storage and compute and everything, almost everything in, in, in every industry revolves around data and compute. And I think that uh, the blockchain part of it is actually just showing that it's still in the early phases in terms of adoption. And a lot of people are getting more interested. A lot of enterprises are getting more interested, but there hasn't been that uh, catering to for the Web2 community in terms of the traditional companies that want to get into the blockchain space, uh, but don't know how. And also uh, the questions in, in terms of the Web3 community and the blockchain community, how they can cater to that specific industry. And I think storage and compute fit perfectly uh, there where they can drive the compliance. And I think that once we have the compliance and the regulations there, uh, that there will be more adoption, and and that's coming soon. And uh, Igon hopes to be a forefront of of that. Yeah, thank you so much, Navjeet, for the update on this. Uh, great to to see you again and uh, hear about the latest things with Igon. Thanks for having me, Jane.